Hello, everyone. I'm the f fucking shit I can't bear. A rope. I just need a rope. Yeah, I need a rope. How about I, I, I could just do that. Yeah, that. It's kind of weird. He kind of floated above the hole for a second. Oh, let me, let me get a look at this. Ah, I think. I think if he kind of grabbed on to the sides and everything, I think he could survive that. Well, anyway. Hell, you could you could just take all this shit, rip it up, and make a rope out of it. Well, anyway. It is 3 a.m. And a fair warning, the first... Um, 10, 15, 20 minutes of this is just going to be me walking in circles around this room talking. Because um, I got some stuff to say. Uh, mostly about the game. <clears throat> um, it's Friday night, early Saturday morning. Uh, when I got home from the library, I decided that you know, I really wanted to play because I was going to have some time alone. And I tend to only want to play this when I'm alone so I can, you know, really get into it and everything. But I was just worn out and I had been up for almost 20 hours. And I just wanted to lay back, watch some of the video. I can't. A rope. I just need a rope. Yeah. <clears throat> And I just wanted to lay back and watch some of the videos I downloaded. And yeah, um, I'm currently without internet and I've been going up to the library and downloading videos from various Let's Players. I know that some people would consider that immoral. It's really not because before I can download the video, I have to click on the video and it still loads the ad and they get their revenue and whatever. Um, and, you know, I'm, I want to watch my shit, but... <clears throat> I've been putting this game off, putting off playing it, and I know the cool thing, the funny thing would be to say that I've been putting it off because I'm too scared, but really, I'm just depressed, and I'm not going to go too far into what's going on since the only person watching this will already know, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to want to be on camera. It takes a lot for me to, you know, get myself into that mindset where I can, you know, laugh and make jokes and everything. Um, <clears throat> and I kept, I really am enjoying this game, so I kept having the desire to just say fuck it and play it without recording, but I didn't want to do that because I know David wants to see this. Um... So, I won't talk anymore about that. I might eventually make a vlog where I talk about how I'm doing and just everything like that. But about the game. I feel bad because when I was editing the parts, I noticed a lot of things that I didn't notice when I was playing. And that's normal. Um, every Let's Player says that sometimes they notice things when editing that they didn't notice when playing. But... It's getting too extreme. There's major plot points that I'm not picking up on. And the reason for that is I'm trying too hard to be on for the camera. And I keep saying, I've said this so many times, that I'm going to stop worrying about what other people think a Let's Play should be. When I started doing this, I followed all the advice that said, oh, if there's any dead air, if there's even a second of dead air, no one's going to watch your video. And... I really don't care. Um, <clears throat> I keep trying so hard to be on for the camera, to make good jokes. And any person that does Let's Plays will tell you that it takes a lot out of you. There's a lot you have to focus on. You have to focus on actually playing the game and doing somewhat decent. One trend you'll notice, if you really look into it, you'll notice that the more popular a Let's Player is, the more they suck at games. And I don't mean that in a douchey way, but the bigger Let's Players like Markiplier, they tend to miss some big shit. They get stuck on puzzles for a long time. And what that is, is there's 
only a so much percentage of your brain power that you can divide between things. And the things you have to divide it between is playing the game well, paying attention to the game, paying attention to the storyline, and giving your commentary. That's a three-way divide. Playing the game well, you know, not dying, not, you know, fucking up, doing good puzzles, paying attention to the story, actually soaking it in, figuring things out, and then giving your commentary. And when you're making a Let's Play, you have to decide what ratio you want to give to those things. And most advice will tell you that to give a lot of it to your commentary. And I'll agree. I'll, I'll agree in a lot of ways. Um, I would... I find it far more entertaining to watch Markiplier fail at a puzzle for 10 minutes. It's funny, I've been, um, I went through all my old hard drives and shit because I have this, I, I got this um, recovery software. So I was just, you know, like finding like, you know, bits of shit that had been deleted, mostly porn. Uh, if I'm being honest with you, I don't have internet right now, and it's not like I can download porn at the library. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. So I've basically been going through all my whole old hard drives and finding bits of porn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I happened to come across Markiplier's playthrough of Limbo. And what that was is it was on a really old hard drive, and it was on a computer I had at one point that was so old that it couldn't handle YouTube. Um, you, YouTube would freeze up. So what I would do is I would download, I would use a tool to download videos from YouTube and then I could watch them um, off the hard drive and that worked with VLC, that worked fine enough that it didn't glitch. And what's funny is David, after a million fucking years, finally got around to playing Limbo. So it's been kind of fun to compare the two, see which one of them gets stuck on puzzles longer. Um, I think that the best way that I can do Let's Plays, if I ever decide to continue doing it, and I know you're going to say, well, you're doing it right now. What do you mean continue doing it? This is just, this is just me playing a game that I know David wanted to see me play. Um, that's all that is. If some, if I decided to actually really start doing YouTube again... I really have to be true to myself and accept my strengths and my weaknesses. Um, and at the end of the day, I play video games because I want to enjoy them. I know this may sound like a very douchey statement, but I'm not here to entertain you. And I know that, like I said, that's a very douchey thing to say when I'm trying to get people to watch a video. But I'm here to, first and foremost, I'm here to enjoy this game. Um, and... I haven't been able to do that to the fullest extent because I've been focusing so hard on giving commentary. Um, so from here on out, there's going to be a lot more dead air than there used to be. Um, I'm going to do a little experiment. Not, not as much an experiment, it's just a question. I'm going to ask anyone watching who's watched these videos, and obviously the only person that will answer this is David. I'm going to give you two jokes. And I'm going to uh, give you examples of two jokes that I've told during this Let's Play. And I want you to tell me which one you found funnier. Because one of them was actually me attempting to be funny. Me focusing on my commentary. Me thinking, okay, what funny things can I say at this point? And constantly trying to think of things to say, funny things to say, interesting things to say, that's what's causing me to just not be able to enjoy the game. And in a minute, I'm going to get into the plot points that I've just totally glossed over and been an idiot and missed. Um, the first joke was when I was in the school and I saw the wall rider, which I don't know if that's actually the wall rider, but it acts just like the wall rider so i'm just gonna say it's the wall rider i honestly think there's probably some kind of connection here with um outlast one i don't know because like yeah both games had digital cameras but those have been around for a while so i don't know exactly what time frame we're looking at here but when i when i encountered the wall rider i said last time i saw you you were balls deep and miles up sure and i think that was a pretty funny joke and then I started singing the Balls Deep song. 
that was a joke that I attempted. That was a joke that I really said I was, you know, at, at the moment I was thinking, okay, what funny things can I say? What funny things can I say? Oh, it's the wall rider. Okay, what, what funny thing can I say about the wall rider? Um, the other joke was one that just kind of came naturally while I was playing. It just kind of fell out of me. And that was the whole spiel of Jesus and his ducklings. And I want to draw a duck. I want a duck to be involved somehow. And I'm hoping and praying, and I really, I'm begging you, I know you're my friend, but don't just say what you know I want to hear. I want you to be honest with me. But I'm hoping that that joke was funnier because that joke came easier. That joke came in a way that I didn't have to focus as much on my commentary. And I'm hoping that by doing that, I can do better at enjoying the game, at soaking in the atmosphere, soaking in the story, and then still occasionally say funny things and not worry as much about what I can say in the moment. Now, as for the story, um, oh, and by the way, like I said, it's 3 a.m. Um, so this video will probably be actually really short. Well, not really short because I'll probably tack it on to whatever I record next. Um, but basically what I'm going to do right now, since uh, there's sleeping people in the house, um, I'm going to try to play and not scream. Psst, which, <laughs> that's not going to go well. It's kind of a mixed bag. I'm no longer living in an apartment, so I can be a little louder at night than I used to be. I mean, I can't fully belt it out or play music because I do have neighbors but um just having a conversation in my old apartment because those walls were shit uh neighbors would hear so I had to be a little quiet mouse at night but I figure this works out well because even if um I discover that I'm really not able to be quiet enough during this which is probably what will happen um <clears throat> Yawned. Oh, I see the moon. <coughs> <coughs> I've ran out of Mucinex. I used to take my Mucinex before recording. Help loosen me up. But anyway. <coughs> I had developed a bit of a theory that I hadn't voiced, but it was basically something after my last recording, it was something I was thinking about. And that theory was that the dick choppy lady was Jessica, since we hadn't seen her. And that was my theory for a while, but then as I was editing, I discovered a few things that I really don't know how I missed. Jessica hanged herself. At some point when we were kids. I don't know why. Um, and I really I, I really don't get how I missed all that shit. Um, I think that, you know, also with a horror game, another part of your brain power is focused on being scared. <laughs> so... Yeah, I feel bad about missing some of those plot details, and in the future, I'm going to try to focus more on just enjoying the game and soaking in the plot. Um, my new theory. Um, also, I discovered that the name of the Dick Choppy Lady is Marta. And I discovered that from a note that I read, and I discovered that from... Uh, when I was editing, I saw that the, um, when you slide down that thing and those guys chasing you decide to stop, they mentioned that I'm in Marta's place. So my new theory is that Marta is actually Jessica's mom. And that Papa Noth is Jessica's dad. Because that note, that, uh, email in that you find in the school mentioned that her father had a big personality so that's my current theory i know that um in david's videos and that's another 
that's an, hold on. That's another reason why. Can I? Take it, I can't. I guess I'll just turn the volume down on the, uh, oh, and, um, you may notice I'm wearing different headphones. My cat ate the cord to my other headphones. That sucks, because they're expensive. Luckily, I can get a replacement for, like, $10, but I can't get it right now because I don't have any way to order anything online. Um, and I gotta get a special one. It's like a four-pole to three-pole something or other. Luckily, I discovered, I hope this doesn't break it. I don't see why it would. But luckily, I discovered that these cheap headphones still will work when plugged into the mix amp. So, and that would have sucked if it didn't, because using the mix amp is the only method I've discovered where I can hear a PlayStation game while recording it. So. Alright. Oh, yeah. And another thing I keep bitching about, but never doing anything about. Okay. Okay, so there's only one control scheme where... Wait a minute. Oh, R3 is run in that one. So, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it as um, default. Um, because, and this is another thing I was talking about, when I'm so focused on the commentary, I neglect doing the most basic shit. I kept complaining about that look-back problem, but I never bothered to fix it. And, and, you know, it's just, I act stupid when I'm trying to focus on commentary. Um, the reason why I changed that is I've always found it kind of annoying to click L3 to run in games. I just always find that annoying because, like, in a panic, sometimes, like, I'll, I'll try to do it and it won't work. But it looks like this is just, the run is just a toggle, and that's a lot easier. I just have to click it once and then it'll just, he'll just run. Um, it would be more annoying if it was um, where I had to hold it. Hey, fella. Okay, so if I remember correctly... The last time I was here, I panicked, and, oh, um, can I, please, Excuse me. But I believe last time I was here, I panicked and ran into a building and locked the door behind me, only to discover there was someone in the freaking room with me. Now, how do I heal again? Yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck. This is bad, I should... Is this the way I'm supposed to go? Because... I should have checked in a lot of those buildings for goodies. That's a problem. Ah, I got the rope. One thing I've noticed is that I think this game has a bit, I think the last one did too. Thanks. 
Um, I think this game kind of has a bit of uh, dynamic difficulty when it comes to the um, shit. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Ah. Okay. Hopefully it checkpointed me when I got the rope. I believe this game has a bit of um dynamic difficulty when it comes to when it comes to the uh, uh, supplies obviously in the first game it was just uh, batteries but then in this it's also the bandages because obviously there's random generation I've discovered that by wa watching some other less players and comparing um, places we found batteries so obviously there's They've probably programmed in a set locations where these things can spawn, and then there's a random chance of them spawning. But I feel like if you're the game probably has that kind of a dynamic system there where if you're doing well with your bandages or your batteries, you'll find them less often. But if you're struggling, they might toss you one. Now that I've changed that, I'm going to have to get used to it. Okay. <clears throat> the one thing I don't like about... I know David said that this part was a bit frustrating and I'm not that bothered by it but one thing that I don't like about it and this is just you know from a design standpoint is that it sometimes feels like uh, I want to almost say it feels like the um, arrows home in on you because I swear there's been times where the trajectory looks like there's no way it's going to hit me. But then once it's out of frame, once I can no longer see the arrow, suddenly I hear myself getting hit by it. And I get damaged. Excuse me. Oh, fuck. Don't touch me. I said, get your hands off me. Touch this gust with out of you. Hey. Hey! No! No, goddamn you! Well, I mean, I can't say I'm surprised given how he was treating them. I think that no matter how religiously nut or butter someone is, I think eventually they'll accept. Ugh. 
You know, I will say, I kind of hope he comes back somehow, because that was kind of a disappointing end to him. Just saying. I still find my way to the mine. My dad died within a month of my mom. He was perfectly healthy until she was gone. And... Um... What does that have to do with this? Odd little man? I realize I haven't been Piece watching my these. Skin stuck in the barbs. It was too late to hold her up. And I was just a kid. Hold on. Ah, the locust. I don't know how many of them got in my mouth. Anyone? The mines. I just need some mines. The others took land. I do think it's kind of interesting that it seems like sickness here. He seems to be kind of going nutter butter. <clears throat> a lot of people didn't notice this, but um, in the first game, uh, you got little notes by having your camera up during events, and you could tell that Miles was kind of losing it. She hanged herself before I could stop her. Or she did it. No. Wait, not her? He... So I think that Jessica was part of this world. Um, they definitely, uh, the school must have been kind of like in this area. Maybe I could. Uh, fuck. Hey. <clears throat> but yeah, um, she was, they were probably part of this world, and then, uh, maybe she knew too much, she knew, like, what kind of weird plans they had for her, and killed herself because of it, it's a possibility. I do think they've missed a bit of an opportunity here. Um, there's been a lot of areas of the school levels where, like, you can see other buildings in the, like, other parts of the school in the distance. They've missed an opportunity to kind of have things out there. I can't tell if that's my feety steps or not. I know David, in the videos I've watched, keeps saying that he thinks, um... Is that wall riding fucker here? I swear to God, I keep seeing shit. He says he thinks you're gonna... <laughs> okay. Okay, Wally. Wally. Wall Rider. Um... He says he thinks that at some point you're probably gonna uh, switch over to playing as Lynn. 
I think either that's going to happen or since she seemed to be having some kind of weird ass accelerated pregnancy last time we saw her, I think also it might be we'll finally come across her and it'll be like that scene in Slither where they come across that woman in the barn and she's all bloated. Something's wrong with me. <laughs> all right. I need some bandages. I need to bandage my body and my wounds. Should have been checking all the roofs to these little things. They might have had shit on them. Ugh. I don't know if anyone <laughs> didn't get, didn't understand the little, hey, I remember this. I saw this hall, this little hallway from the other side, from the other side of that door. If anyone didn't get the uh, little tune I was doing earlier, uh, squeeze me. Just look up 17 year locust. It's a song. Oh! <laughs> Methinks I was spending a little too much. I probably wasn't supposed to spend that much time staring at that. Yeah, I'm so used to the, uh... Oh! <laughs> Maybe I should put my night vision on. Pyramid head again. Would it be safe to go? Okay. There's the, uh, Cafeteria from before. Yeah. One thing I noticed when I was watching David, and I'm looking forward to hearing how he <laughs> reacts to that. Um, is, uh, the part where you're trying to push the little cart to climb up the thingy, and, uh, Marga's coming after you. Um, ah. I think it only tr triggers. I don't want to turn around. I 
think there was another one of these over here. I thought I looked at it and I didn't get a pop-up. Eh, whatever. Um, but I think this can only trigger if you're, um, if she's close enough to you at the time. Uh, but when I climbed over the fence, she grabbed my leg. That didn't happen to David. So. Oh, fuck. So I'm hoping when he's watching, he's like not expecting that to happen, and he gets, as he would put it, gets a fright. That's all well and good, but I don't need it anymore. I wonder if this will be the same note as before. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Jessica, come here. Jess. Hey. Quick. That thing is done. Oh God, the sun's looked down upon by little one. Whole light of light. Jessica, me this can you hear me? And shed on me my presence bright. I need not fear if thou were near. Thou art my savior, kind and dear. Sun, look down upon my little one. Whole light of light, keep me this night and shed round me my presence bright. There's something above me. I need not fear. Thou art my savior, kind and dear. Quick, the day is done. Oh God, the sun, look down upon my little one. Whole light of light, keep me this night and shed round me. This way, Blake. Jess, are you I'm there? Okay. Well then. That was just great. Ew. So what I'm wondering is when you get put in the, um, when you get sent to the school areas, is that only happening in your mind or is there some supernatural element? Because so far it hasn't been made 100% clear if there is any supernatural element to this game because all the supernatural stuff you record ends up being static. Um, it's possible because that white light that keeps shining, which is supposed to be like the trumpets of the horsemen, um, that's, you know, what it says will happen in the, the biblioteca, um, <laughs> um, that there be light and trumpets blaring during the uh, copper pips, um, but it's unknown if that's actually happening or if that's something that like maybe Papanoth is sending out and maybe it's got like a psychological effect like the Blake. intensity of the light and maybe the frequency of the horn something about it fucks with your mind so I don't it's not clear yet if this game has supernatural elements you know you think clear as day that it does and yet with um uh, the possibility of you just going nutter butter. You know, there's that. Fuck it here. I'm not putting a fucking toe in that water. There's something wrong. A lake is wrong. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. Here's an idea. How about you guys stop making shitty fucking half TV games? And go make off another fucking Alan Wake. Fucking bastards. <laughs> so. 
I need to find some. How many batteries do I even have? How am I gonna get across that? Oh place? fucking hell! I'm good. <laughs> I'm fucking golden. I thought I was almost out. Um. So that's the two possibilities that either there is the supernatural elements, which I mean, clear as day. Um, hey, look what I'm doing. I'm setting a toe in the water. Are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? Huh, Blake? Are you mad at me? I'm putting a toe in. I'm putting all my toes in. I'm putting it all in. Let's just go. Let's just swim for it. Yeah, cool. Go for it, bro. Wanna offer me some assistance? Broseph? Oh shit. Well, <laughs> expected that. I honestly knew that was gonna happen. I just wanted to see what it was. Okay. Anyway, so there's obviously either gonna there's either supernatural elements, or it's a psychological element that you know you're going crazy. Which, one thing I find interesting is, and I gotta be careful about the way I say this because I don't want it to come off sounding wrong, but <clears throat> obviously they're going for the whole trope of like the nutty, backwoods, overzealous, redneck, religious peoples, um, but one thing that's always disappointed me is anytime... Um, almost any time that that's, uh, me thinks I was supposed to be filming this from this side. Hello. Let me just, let me just crawl down there and say hi to you. How you doing? You look, you look good. You look a little, you look a little stressed. Let me say hi to your friend. Ah. Oh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. just had the wrongest horrible thing <laughs> pop into my head. I need to remember this. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to I'm going to write it down. <laughs> I'm going to write it. I can find something to fucking write on. But anyway, anytime um this kind of thing is done in these games, it's always portrayed that the uh, rednecks are in the wrong. That they're the bad guys. That they're just, you know, nutty religious people. And then the protagonists have to deal with their overzealous craziness. And this is the part where um, I, I was saying that I gotta be careful how I say this because I don't want to come off wrong. I'm not saying that that's wrong. Um... As far as representing reality, it is wrong. Um, I'm not going to get into a religious debate of, you know, whether there is a God or not or anything. But if there is a God, it sure as fuck is not the one that people like this worship. Um, but as purely from an entertainment fictional horror standpoint, I've always thought it would be kind of interesting... Like kind of make for kind of a good you know horror movie if it turned out that these people were right that the actual god in this universe did want this was everything that they're you know going for i you know i've always loved that kind of um it's very lovecraftian to think that oh i can get into the house to think that um I would mention a uh, book that it reminds me of, but I'm not going to because that basically spoils the ending. Um, but, Val, surrender yourself to the care of these men, and I promise you will not suffer any more than necessary. You must know you are in the enemy's fugue, and will only regret this path now for all eternity. I have loved you and love you still, and God still 
and God loves all his creatures, even when they've strayed. Come back to us. Help us find salvation. God loves you. Papa forgives you. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, anyway. <clears throat> so... Anyway, the idea of like, um, you know, you go through life thinking that if there is a God, it's a God that rewards the good. You know, I think that even most the most hardcore atheists would say, well, if there is a God, theoretically, it'd be one that, you know, rewards the good. But the idea that the one true God is one that rewards people like this. I think that purely from like a fiction horror standpoint, that would make for an interesting story. <laughs>